Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get pre-orders of all the upcoming Force of Will sets, as well as releases of previous sets after they come out. CCGprime.com, with over 100,000 Force of Will singles, as well as out-of-print boxes from the past, and TCG accessories, as well as FowlLibrary.com, a wonderful resource for deck lists, article discussions, and more. Check them out at FowlLibrary.com, as well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer member, Vite Raman. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey there, rulers. dm 73 here, bringing you a feature match for the week. A little bit of a throwback, but also with some updates. I am playing uh, Gruspalesta Stone Dance, uh, which is a list um, designed by Lars, uh, Lars Grams. Um, it is making use of the new kind of stone rampy kind of support that came out with Isis with the resonance and abusing the fact that uh, Gruce Ballesta can turn those stones into real stones um, to do some pretty silly things with Gruce Ballesta's cards. Um, and then Robert is playing um, just another throwback of Mindless Moonstart. The deck doesn't necessarily have a lot of new tools, um, but he did want to play uh, Mindless Moonstart here, so I figured this would be a good match to kind of show off between the two decks. So obviously a little bit of an advantage for Almerius against the burn deck being that we have 7,000 life, um, but it does give us at least um, some safety to be able to do what we need to do for the Gruce Ballesta deck because ultimately um, it does tap itself out a lot in the early turns typically when you try to go for the combo pieces. And Robert is nicely set up with having coin and the bonus red Gonna go ahead and get our first stone using Gruce Ballesta's replacement effect. We're gonna hit Magic Stone of Atoms. Now, proper sequencing here would have been to use the Almerius, so I have Gruce Ballesta ready to go, but we're gonna go ahead and go right into it with a Magic Stone Dance of Chaos. This is gonna get us three stones into play tapped that come out, uh, that go back to the bottom of the deck at the end of the turn. We hit two six sage stones here, which then means that we can use the six sage stone trigger to sack one of the stones and get a stone that's not going to go away at the end of the turn, then recover again and do it again. Getting rid of the Brad or getting rid of the six sage stone here to get another Brad stone. So at the end of the turn, the knowledge one of the magic stones of knowledge is going to go away. It's going to go back to the bottom of the deck, which we're totally fine with. And then we just pass the turn there. So on turn one, uh, we went up to three stones. So we're at seal three automatically. Next turn we'll be at seal four uh, and probably have four unique names, which is a pretty huge piece for a lot of the Gruce Balesa support cards. So that's kind of the intro to what this deck is trying to do um, in terms of its early turn setups. Now, again, if I had done that a little bit better sequencing wise, um, I, if I had called stone with Almerius instead, I would have actually been able to be at four stones, um, going into my turn two, which would have been even sillier, but you know, we, ma mistakes happen <laughs> and sequencing mistakes happen. Robert's got a floating red. He's got coin and he's got one. He's staring down Gruce Ballesta. He's staring down Almerius after we, we've already burned ourselves, you know, burned him, me for two because of the six Sage Stone trigger to be able to, you know, tap my list and then recover it. I think Robert's thinking maybe we just judgment here and try to just go fast, which I don't hate. I mean, he's going to get to draw a card off of, um, he's going to draw a card off of my list. This means that he has the most availability to just be able to apply the pressure. So my list is going to come in. It's to draw a card from the judgment of um, my list because of mood start. Uh, and so my list is going to be swinging in for 21. Like that's, that's a good chunk of damage um, to be able to put pressure with here. Takes me down. To uh, 47. We're gonna go ahead. We start looking at Gruce Ballista to see if we want a judgment here. You see, we hit a second magic stone of knowledge, and then we go, wait, we need five stones to give him imperishable. Uh, so ultimately, we're just gonna go ahead and say pass the turn here. Not really too many other options. Um, don't really have any great ways to be able to deal with a um, J Ruler right now, um, and we don't want to lose our Gruce Ballista. So we're just gonna pass. Um, 
we can kind of sh lean back on some of the good things that uh, green decks do here, um, which is things like Prissia or, you know, Big Show, stuff like that. And again, we're still sitting pretty on our life totals. we got a good amount of life left over. So we have a cane of the salamander. Floating some will potentially before we go to combat. I'm not, oh, sorry, before calling stone. It's another red source. Let's see if there's anything to be done here. Goes in for another mount of damage. And then we go, you know what? We're going to go ahead and cast Prissia's Big Show here. Look at the top two. We know that you're probably not playing any kind of cancel. But we're, especially now, you know, your double red will available. You're not at seal. So, like, there's no way here. So, we're just going to get a one, uh, do it for one. And the reason why is because we want to try to get, um, which for the pointy hat from the deck, which then we can prevent all damage that would be dealt by Mylist for the turn, and then we can block it with the Prissia, uh, and then Prissia will kill it. So a nice little three will kind of trade sequence there, um, doing some pretty cool stuff. Obviously, some of the things that the Grus Ballesta deck is trying to do is like a Grus Awakening of Grus Ballesta to be able to make my stones huge, um, which as of right now, if I have one in hand, I can cast for that one will and awaken it. Um, so there's a very real option where based on what my top decks are, um, I just have lethal here uh, or what's in hand. This is also one of the reasons why Big Show is really helpful in this deck is because sometimes you kind of need to dig for those Grus Ballesta answers because there's no real good way to search them. Um, but once you get an opening, then it's, you know, it's a matter of, hey, we got to try to get um, get where we need. You're going to use that Floating Red to play a Cane of the Salamander, burn me for five. And then we do have a second Prissia here in hand, thankfully, to start trying to dig for that Awakening of Grus Ballesta to try to pop off. Drawing for turn. Call stone with Grus Ballesta. That's a six age stone. A Xuya comes down, forcing him to banish the cane of the salamander. Put a plus one, plus one counter on there. And we'll just swing in for four and then seven, take him down to 29. So didn't see any of the Grus Ballesta stuff, but sitting on a good amount of will to be able to do some other plays here. And we're going to go ahead and Judgment Almarius. So there's nothing to reanimate here. Almerius unfortunately lost a lot of her best reanimate targets here. Um, but still, because I have a board established here, this gives us a good chance to be able to just push through for lethal next turn anyway because of pumps. It's a water stone. Interesting choice to not call stone with my list there, since he's already dead. But although, maybe you, you don't think about the fact that paying, if you were going to judgment, um, mood start, it would take your entire will pool, and then you're still staring down so much lethal, so that maybe that's just not the answer. That's fair. Mood start's not really a great jade ruler. She's kind of... Uh, an afterthought where if you need a threat later just to be able to finish the game off you have it but early on not so much 
Fairy tail rabbit, very, very large. We start to pump everybody up, but then we go, wait a minute, we can't do that. <laughs> we don't have white. That's not a white stone. That is a basic wind stone. Um, and I'll marry the, er, and Crystal Lust is not judgmented, so it doesn't have that ability to be able to do anything yet. I'll float some will, call stone. I think we float white. Swing it on the ground for four. Double checking stat lines here, seeing when and if he wants to block or if he's got some spot removal. Does decide to just take the four, go down to 27 in response to no blocks, I think. Uh, nope, still nothing in response. So we're gonna go ahead and swing in for another five here with Suya. See a block from the fairy tale rabbit potentially here, which would be strange. You'd think they'd want to block the Prissia. Uh, Robert would want to block the Prissia. We said that's fine. You can block the Suya. That's fine. Swing in for seven. We see a Number 13 to cancel the spirit of fire and water. Once again, using the wrong will there. Um, and then with the pumps uh, from Almerius and stuff for the swings, just kind of doing the math, that counting the math out together, recognizing that that is going to be lethal. And so we'll move on to the next game. That's the other thing about the combo with the Magic Stone Dance of Chaos and Gris Ballesta is you can get to seal four on like turn one. Um, and then, so, like, there's a really high likelihood of, like, being to seal seven very, very quickly as well. Um, and you can do some pretty, pretty mean things. Going into game two. Hitting that first stone, once again, getting the magic stone of Adams. Calling stone with the Amarius this time. Only seeing one trigger from the six age stone, but that still at least gives me a sack recover and then a second sack. So I get to keep two. Um, so we're gonna lose, once again, we're only gonna get to be at three stones at the end of our turn one. We have nothing to use the will for, so we'll just pass the turn. But it is nice that we got a wind magic stone, which we're playing one of, and a brad stone. So this is really good, because this means that it's very likely that our next stone will be a unique, which suddenly makes our remote control golem only, or sorry, ultra magic stone golem only cost one, um, and, and sets us up for being able to apply pressure without really being too concerned about it. The question for Robert is, do we want to try to go for the same play we did last time? I mean, it put down a lot of pressure. Do we try to go for something a little bit more um, defensive and reactive? Ultimately, though, the big concern here is between the two sides, um, Robert doesn't have anything to be able to respond, as far as I'm aware, in the Mindless Moonstar package to be able to respond to an awakening of Gruce Ballesta, especially if it's awakened, where all of the stones have eternal swiftness and barrier. Uh, so then, like, the stones are just lethal. Um, out, so outside of blocking, um, you know, you're kind of out of luck there. Choosing to proactively cast a Cinderella using that floating, free-floating red... Yeah, and I think this is to say, like, I know that I can't answer a Grus Ballesta's Awakening, 
Um, so let's, you know, make sure that if there is one there on top of the tech in the top two, we get rid of it um, and just kind of at least put up a little bit of a blocker wall to set us up. Seeing that six sage stone here, we're just going to go ahead and recover Almerius. We're at four unique stones. There's really not a reason to sack one with um, uh, Gris Ballesta. This sets us up very nicely um, for an awakening on turn two if we've got it and gives us a very good defensive play as well. Down comes that Ultra Magic Stone Golem for one. Like I said, it'll, I have four unique stones, so he costs eight less. So threatening a very large 2020 body um, that is outside of the range of what a Mylas Mujdar deck can really uh, threaten outside of something like a flip from my list. So we just slam it, kill the um, Cinderella, and then pass the turn. He's going to burn us for two uh, in the recovery and then move two untaps. Call stone with that uh, mood start. We're going to get another burn for two. Go down to 64. And then we're probably going to see a Mylas flip here. Um, so he's a 21-21, or 20-20. Mylas with the number of cards in his hand because he'll draw from, Grusbel, or from mood start. We'll be at 2100 attack. So we'll be able to kill the Ultra Magic Stone Golem. And then can push in pressure-wise. The threat is he can see once again that I've got green will, right? So if there's a Prissia in hand, then that could be a problem where I'll just do the same thing again, where I'll Prissia, um, do a, cast a big show, go get a number, a uh, pointy hat, witch from the main prevent all damage from my list. And then I've got Prissia pointy hat and ultra magic stone golem just sitting there, um, to, to push back on him next turn. There's also a world where, um, if, he does go for the Mylist route. I can just pump up um, the Ultra Magic Stone Golden with Almerius. This is something that Almerius is. I, I talked about this a little bit on the uh, teacher or office hours. Almerius actually is surprisingly relevant for that plus two plus two for being able to save stuff. Um, a lot of times we're seeing things being exact damage or one more damage. Um, so being able to get two above whatever's coming at you is is really nice. It usually is enough to make them have to pay an additional card to try to kill it, which is great because then they're going, you know, negative one in value. And the problem is even for Robert, if, you know, if this is what he's going to try to do, um, it's going to cost him a lot. And then he leaves himself completely open to like an awakening or a second golem. So, yeah, we are going to see Popcoin. Out comes the my list. Resave, that's fine. We're just going to let you to deal the 21 to it. Swing in for 21 and we say, that's fine. We'll take that damage too. We're pretty secure because I think... We have in hand the way to find lethal, which is Awakening of Gruce Ballesta Awakened. Uh, only cost me one black because I have the number of different stones. My stones become 10 tens with Eternal and Barrier, uh, Recover, and then I just swing in for lethal with the four stones. So that is it. Huge thanks to Lars for shipping us this list. It was an absolute blast to play and kind of goof around with. Uh, and thanks for Robert for being willing to sit down and jam some games with us. Deck list for the Gruce Ballesta deck will be up later this week. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying, Class Dismissed.